Way back in 2017, a group of scientists were snorkeling along the southern tip of Australia's Great Barrier Reef. This research team included Nathan Shainer, an optical probe developer at the University of California in San Diego. Now, uh, Mr. Shainer and the research team were out here doing some other research, not involving jellyfish. But as they snorkeled, someone noticed a strange-looking jellyfish floating with them in the water. Mr. Shainer netted the jellyfish and noticed that it had glowing blue filaments, or lines, running through its otherwise translucent body. They brought this biofluorescent jellyfish, the Equoria australis, back to their lab. They took samples of its tissue and performed some transcriptome sequencing to see what proteins were being expressed in the jellyfish's body. Now, before I get too far into this uh, jellyfish, I should mention that, there, that there's a known fluorescent protein that's frequently used in research studies called GFP, or green fluorescent protein. When expressed in an animal's tissue or when isolated in a vial, it glows with an eerie green shimmer. It's really good for research because it allows the researchers to trace the flow of blood or ingested material or just some kind of fluid through a tissue sample. You can see how material is distributed through a certain volume of tissue. And this can be really, really useful. So when the researchers looked at the transcriptome of the Equoria australis, they discovered five other fluorescent proteins some of which were pretty similar to GFP. Two of these five proteins gave off a greenish light, like GFP, but two others gave off a bluish light. And the fifth protein, this fifth fluorescent protein, was described as switching between a yellow glow and being clear and translucent when it was exposed to light. So the researchers, having their curiosity rewarded, but not quite yet sated by these discoveries, they decided to take a second look at the Equoria victoria, which is a related jellyfish species that naturally produces the green fluorescent protein, and whose genes are the source for the research-related GFP. By analyzing the genes of this jellyfish, they discovered four more fluorescent proteins, including one called AOSFP1. This particular fluorescent protein gives off a really bright fluorescence. It's, it, it gives off a really bright light, something like five times brighter than regular GFP. This AOSFP1 protein also has a few other advantages, including not being denatured and turned off by being exposed to light. In other words, it keeps glowing for long periods of time. In the research world, this would mean being able to use a fluorescent protein for tissue analysis that can continue to glow and show activity for 48 to 72 hours, instead of regular GFP, which fades or bleaches out in less than 10 hours. Mr. Shainer said, quote, Fluorescent proteins are sort of like a Swiss army knife. Everyone has a different use for them, depending on what they're trying to study, but brighter is always better for pretty much everyone. Hopefully, this will actually enable people to see things that they couldn't see before." Unquote. To get another perspective on how these are used in research, consider the comments of Joachim Godhart. He's a fluorescent protein engineer at the University of Amsterdam. So he wasn't involved in this particular jellyfish research, but he is in the industry. He's the guy who will be using this science and applying it in such a way as to create practical tools for other scientists to use. Mr. Godhart said they produced new and, quote, promising, unquote, variants. They've basically created a splash of diversity for the engineers to play with. Mr. Godhart explained that the proteins and their genes could be experimentally mutated to make them smaller, to make them brighter, and easier to manipulate and use within a living cell or within living tissue. If these discoveries find practical application, 
and uh, honestly it seems pretty obvious that they will, we can expect future studies on cells, cellular metabolism, cellular behavior, and everything else that traditionally uses GFP in research to get a sudden and significant increase in the quality and the detail of their observations. All of this cellular research, it, it, the whole field, is this really diverse and extremely important discipline as it's used in everything from in vitro fertilization treatments to diet science to cancer research. If this new biofluorescent protein technology can make it out of the lab and into other people's labs so that it can help them with their research, and all of this stuff is going to get the equivalent of having the brightness on your TV turned all the way up. Just imagine all of the new stuff, the, the greater detail and the more subtle processes that for the first time we would be able to see.